Knock, knock. Hi guys. I'm Harvard dermatologist, Dr. Abby Waldman from Boston, Massachusetts. And today we are talking about the most powerful vitamin for your skin. I am a huge proponent of eating the rainbow, eating all the vitamins in your diet to get the most healthy and functioning skin. A, B, C, D, E, they are all important for having functioning skin. But one of these is a little extra and it wins the award for the most powerful vitamin for the skin. And that award goes to dun, 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 a form of vitamin B3 called niacinamide or also goes by the name nicotinamide. The vitamin's so nice, they named it twice. It should not be confused with niacin. So niacinamide is everywhere. You almost can't avoid it these days. It's in serums, it's in creams, it's in sunscreens, it's in moisturizers. You are probably using it right now and you don't even mean to be using it. And there's a reason for this. Niacinamide has been shown in studies to be helpful for acne and wrinkles and brown spots and even skin cancer. Most of these studies show that the topical form of niacinamide is the key, but in one population, taking it orally is how you're gonna get the most effect. So what is niacinamide? So in the 19th and 20th century in the United States, many suffered from this condition known as pellagra, and it involved dermatitis, basically a rash, dementia, diarrhea, and uh, the fourth D is death. So it was discovered that pellagra was due to a deficiency in vitamin B3. And when you repleted the vitamin B3, all of the symptoms went away. So those who were most likely to be deficient in vitamin B3 were those who were poorer, who didn't have a balanced diet full of green leafy vegetables and meats and legumes and nuts and seeds and all the things that we know to be part of a balanced, healthy diet now. And their diets were high in rice or grains which actually deplete the levels of vitamin B3. So nowadays, governments such as the US will actually fortify grains and cereals to include niacin or vitamin B3 so that deficiency is less likely. Now, niacinamide is not the same as niacin. It is actually, even though they are both forms of vitamin B3, niacinamide is the amide form of niacin and they function in similar ways and similar pathways. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the science, but essentially the takeaway is that niacinamide is critical for two things. So one thing is it's actually critical for energy production in the cell. You can think of it similar to like a furnace in a house, which is gonna burn oil or gas or even wood to produce heat. And so similar to the body, we burn something called ATP or these calories to produce energy. And so when you need to move your body, you burn ATP in order to move your body and do what you need to do. So niacinamide is critical in that pathway. In addition, it is critical for protecting and repairing your DNA. So essentially we are getting bombarded all the time with radiation from the sun. If you've had some radiation, um, smoking, things like that are constantly bombarding our cells and especially the ones on our skin because these are the ones that are out there. They're like the front line. And so every time that sun hits the DNA, there's a potential for DNA damage. So niacinamide plays a significant role in identifying that and being a part of that repair mechanism, as well as decreasing inflammation in the skin. So it can reduce the cytokines that lead to inflammation associated with these type of injuries. So because of these anti-inflammatory effects, niacinamide has been shown to be helpful in a whole host of skin conditions. Most of this research is in topical use of niacinamide, primarily in a 4% concentration. Randomized trials show that niacinamide when used topically in a 4% gel can be as effective as topical antibiotics in clearing acne and reduce papules and pustules by 60% when used over the course of eight weeks. Same with rosacea. When a moisturizer is applied with niacinamide, rosacea, pustules and papules become decreased. It can decrease inflammation in eczema and can actually prevent trans epidermal water loss in patients with eczema where dryness and water loss is key. And it has actually been shown to be more effective than petrolatum or Vaseline in preventing trans epidermal water loss. And then significant double blinded split face randomized controlled trials have shown that topical niacinamide 
is effective in reducing wrinkles and reducing brown spots, improving skin texture. And so pretty much this is the wonderkind of vitamins. This is the vitamin that's gonna help almost everyone, no matter what your skin condition, when you apply topically. And that for that reason, it's found almost everywhere in your skincare. Now, who should be taking this orally? The body does not make niacinamide. It does make some niacin, but does not make niacinamide. So you really do need to be taking in niacinamide through your diet. So who should be taking niacinamide orally? So remember when I said that niacinamide plays a role in energy and it plays a role in inflammation and in DNA repair. So robust clinical randomized control trials have shown that when taken orally at 500 milligrams twice a day in the form of niacinamide or nicotinamide, which are the same, but not niacin, that it reduces the risk of skin cancer by about 20 to 23% in patients who are high risk for getting skin cancer. So that means if you've had significant sun damage, if you have little actinic damage, little actinic keratosis, if you've had skin cancer before, you would benefit greatly from taking a niacinamide supplement twice a day, 500 milligrams, to reduce the incidence of future skin cancer in the future because, again, niacinamide plays a critical role in identifying damages to the DNA from UV radiation and helping to fix that. So niacinamide's actually been used in kids, in patients with renal transplant, in patients on dialysis. So it's generally thought to be safe, but you do want to check with your physician before taking this supplement. The most common side effect is diarrhea, particularly in patients who are on dialysis. It is not known to cause the flushing associated with niacin. So again, don't confuse it with niacin. It's nicotinamide or niacinamide. And then rarely um, some effects on platelets have been shown as well. Uh, so certainly if you have a blood disorder or a low platelet, account to check with your physician before taking. Other circumstances where you may consider supplementation with niacinamide. One comment on acne oral use, I have seen out on TikTok and different social media discussion of using niacinamide orally for acne prevention. There actually aren't too many papers on this. There are two studies I could find where they actually combine niacinamide with other vitamins and minerals. And in those cases, it did reduce acne, but there are no studies that I know of to date that show that niacinamide taken orally will help cure or prevent acne. So at this time, I don't recommend it for that purpose. Again, use it topically and just make sure you're getting a balanced diet. Now, who else may consider using niacinamide? Now, most of us are actually getting enough niacinamide in our diets, as long as you're getting a balanced diet with meats and nuts and beans and leafy vegetables. If you are not, if you have a really poor diet, that may be a time that you consider whether your levels of niacinamide and niacin are high enough. There are certain times, say if you have cancer or if you have some sort of GI illness that's inhibiting absorption of vitamins and minerals, such as you know bariatric surgery or inflammatory bowel disease. And some of those conditions, you may consider a test for niacin, speak to your doctor about this, and generally would go along with sort of an overall vitamin and mineral deficiency. So something to consider speaking to your doctor if you fit into those categories. So in summary, if you're not already using topical niacinamide, you probably should. And oral niacinamide, 500 milligrams twice a day, should be considered by those of you out there who are high risk for skin cancer, significant sun damage, prior skin cancers in the past. I recommend it to all my patients who have had skin cancer. And leave in the comments if you'd like me to recommend any specific supplements if you fit into that category. So I'm Dr. Abby Waldman. Be well.